Hello and welcome back. Hope you guys are doing well. Uh, I think the live office hours that we've been doing have, have, has been a lot of fun. I've enjoyed spending that time with you guys. Uh, so again, if you are watching, after you finish watching the video, if you're having problems with this assignment or with any other assignments, please join me, uh, join us at 11 uh, to 12 on our Google Meet. And then um, I can go through any problems on the on the homework that you want to see. If I need to reteach a topic, I can do it for you. Uh, you get all of your questions answered. Then when we're done, we'll just uh, we'll socialize, which you guys have been apparently really enjoying and uh, just spending time uh, talking, and getting to know each other. So uh, without any further ado, we're going to move on. So yesterday's assignment, I think with area with triangles and um, and parallelograms was really easy. You guys seem to do pretty well on that. There were a few kind of tricky problems in there, which again, I'm gonna throw some kind of tricky problems at you today on the back side of the assignment as well, but we should be good to go. All right, so first thing, um, we're just gonna review the area of triangles. So we noticed yesterday we had the base times the height divided by two. That's our formula for the area of a triangle. Uh, the reason we divide it by two is if we take the rectangle, the base times the height, and we cut a diagonal across here, it's gonna cut the triangle in half. And we can see by rotating this around, it is exactly in half. Uh, so that part of the triangle is exactly the same as the other part. And if we move that point A anywhere, it doesn't actually have to be a diagonal, but if we move it anywhere, the same thing happens. We can move this side over here. And then if we rotate the triangle upside down, uh, we'll notice that it's exactly the same size as the other one. So it's still being cut in half. Same thing happens over here. Uh, I can move this side over to here and do the exact same thing, rotating this around 180 degrees. And we'll notice that it's exactly the same size as the other one, okay? So there are formula for the area of a triangle is the base times the height divided by two. For parallelograms, it's just simply the base times the height. And we saw that with the, the roof problem, but more simply put here, if I have a base, uh, this side, parallelograms, the opposite sides are gonna be congruent. So if that's 12, this is 12 down here as well. Okay, and then the height is going to be 10. So base times height would be uh, 12 times 10, which is 120. The reason that works, even though this is not a rectangle, is this portion that's sticking out extra over here can be moved to the other side, and we can make a rectangle out of it. And now this rectangle would have a base of 12 still. It's still the same 12, right? We just moved it from over here to over here. It's still the same length, and it still has the same height as 10. Okay, same thing if we want to move the part on the right, we can move that over to the left. We still have the same base of 12, same height of 10, okay? So for triangles, uh, it's gonna be base times height divided by two, and for parallelograms, base times height. So how are we gonna find the area of a trapezoid? Well, we learned about finding area through deconstruction, and we could break this down into our rectangle in the middle, our triangle on the right, and our triangle on the left, then add them all together. That's totally possible. But let me show you another method. Uh, and the formula for the area of a trapezoid is actually base one plus base two, divided by two. Do you remember what we're doing when we add two things together divided by two? Mathematically speaking, what do we call that? So that's like if we have 70 and 90, we add them together we get, and we divide by two, we get 80. We're taking the average, right? So what this is actually is the average of the bases. So this is the average for the bases, and then we multiply that times the height. So visu visually, let me show you what's happening here. So if I take this side over here, I've got 10 and four, and four on the other side, so I guess I'll move that over here, okay? Um, what is the average of, this would, if I add it together, that would be uh, 10 plus four plus four is gonna be 18. So what's the average of 18 and 10? So 18 plus 10 uh, divided by two is gonna be, oh, then I have to, sorry, multiply that times the height. So the average of 18 and 10 is gonna be 14. So then 14 times five is gonna give us a total area of 70. Well, another way that we could do this visually is if I take this part here, which is four, and I rotate it just like this, and move it over to the other side. Oh wait, that's not quite right. What did I do wrong? Oh, I have to flip it. Anyway, um, let me see if I can get this to work. Flip up and down. Yeah, there we go. All right, so it's still the exact same area, right? Uh, and now instead of 10 and four and four, we have 10 and four on the top 
and 10 and 4 over here. So what we did is we took the 18 and the 10 and we were able to kind of compress them together to get their average bases, which is a base of 14 and 14. See that, the 14? So the average of the bases, which is 14, times the height of 5. So we're basically, we were able to make a rectangle out of our trapezoid. Exactly the same how we were able to make a rectangle out of our parallelogram by moving one of the sides over here. We were able to do the exact same thing uh, with this one by flipping it up and down and moving it. So essentially, we're taking the average of the two bases multiplied by the height. Let me show you another one. So it's not as easy like if we have four and six over here, but we are still actually doing the same thing. So if we added these together, that would be four plus 10 plus six, which is gonna give us 20. So what's the average of 10 and 20? So 10 plus 20 divided by two, then we multiply that times our height to five. Uh, that's gonna be 30 divided by two is 15. So 15, I do that a lot, or I don't lift the pen. So 15 times five, which is going to be equal to 75. All right, so what we can do over here is we can take the average of six. So half of six is actually gonna be three. So I'm gonna cut this in half, and then I'm gonna flip it up here. All right, so it's still the exact same area, except now it's only three instead of six. Then on the other side, instead of four, I'm gonna cut it in half as well to get two, and flip and rotate and move this up here. So we ended up, so now up here we've got three, and over here we have two. So two plus 10 plus three is 15, and on the bottom we have 15 as well. So we went from 10 and 20 to 15 and 15. So again, what, what is that? Well, it's the average of the bases, 10 plus 20 divided by two is 15, then 15 times five, which gave us 75, okay? So the area of a trapezoid is given by the formula of the average of the bases times the height. All right, the only other one I want to show you is the area of a rhombus or a kite. So with a rhombus or a kite, I didn't mean to do that, um, you could break it down by deconstruction and notice we just have four right triangles. And so we have six times eight, um, which is going to be 48, and then divide that by two, which is going to be 24, and then six and eight, which is also 24. Okay, so those are the same. And then 15 times eight, um, then divide that by 2, which is going to be 120, which would be 60, and then 60 over here as well. And then we can add them all together, which is going to give us 120 plus 48, which is all together going to be 168. Well, I'm saying there's another formula we can do, and let's see if we get the same thing. So D1 times D2 divided by 2. These The D is going to be diagonals. So our first diagonal for our rhombus or kite in this case is going to be 16. So we're gonna do 16 times our other diagonal, which is 21, and then we're gonna divide all that by two. So we're not adding them together, it's not an average, we're multiplying it to divide it by two. So what's 16 times 21 uh, divided by two? So I'm just gonna put that in my calculator real quick. So 16 times 21, and then I'm gonna divide that by two, 168. <laughs> How cool. It's exactly what we got whenever we did the area by deconstruction. So why did that work? So it's kind of cool about this class is I can not just show you the formulas and how to use the formulas, but we can actually intuitively see where the formulas came from. So let me show you this from another perspective. So if we do the diagonal of eight and eight, which is 16, and another diagonal 21, which is 21, if I just do the diagonal times the diagonal, 16 times 21, that's gonna give me the area of the entire rectangle right? But do I want the area of the entire rectangle? No, I want the area of just the uh, just the kite. Well, if I break this down, uh, this part up here, which is extra, is going to be exactly the same area as this part, right? Because it's just a triangle with the diagonal cutting it across. Same thing with the area down here and the area down here. So what's the relationship between the area of the rectangle and the area of the kite? It's exactly half right? And that's why we do the area of the rectangle, which is the diagonal times the diagonal, divided by two, which will give us the area of the kite. Okay, so kind of cool. Uh, I really enjoy that one. So in review, the area of the trapezoid is going to be the base, average of the bases. So if we had 16 and 10, half of, or sorry, 16 and 10, oh, that's way off. I should fix that. It's embarrassing. Uh, apparently I didn't check that out this year. Anyway, so 10 and 16 is 26, half of that's 13. So we took the extra uh, three on uh, from both sides or one and a half from each side or whatever it ends up being. And then we end up with 13 and 13. And then we multiply that times our height. Uh, for the area of the rhombus, we take the diagonal. So diagonal times the diagonal. 
and then we divide it by two because we're only interested in half of it because it is triangles instead of the rectangle. All right, that's pretty much it. So really short lecture. Um, gonna mix some things up a little bit tomorrow because uh, tomorrow we're gonna go ahead and take the practice test. So we've pretty well taught everything that we needed for this unit. We even went over a little bit of algebra stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and give you guys a practice test on Friday. Now will give me time to analyze the practice test and get some data from it. It actually takes a while for me to create um, the, oh, what am I trying to think? To create the solutions video for the practice test because I have to analyze all the data and whatnot. So um, I'll give you guys instructions on the practice test tomorrow um, and you can read those. You'll be taking it through Mastery Connect and it's not for a grade, it's just a practice test, but I am gathering the data from it. So uh, do, do your best, of course. Uh, don't take it in groups or anything. I want to know what you know individually, okay? So just take it on your own. This will just give you an idea of how you would have done if we took the real test tomorrow okay because it's just like the real test it's just the practice version okay so take it um and what's best is if you can edit the pdf just like on the homework and then once you have all the multiple choice answers like a c d a or whatever you get for all other problems then uh, go into the mastery connect app or the browser or the link or however you end up doing it and then just simply select all of your answers for the multiple choice portion and that'll submit your responses to me through mastery connect which will help me gather the data and analyze it so um, that's what i want you guys to do tomorrow um, but also you need to keep a actually work out the problems like you would on the homework on the pdf on the actual practice test itself that way you have a copy and i have a copy uh, where i can see your work and i can see what you're doing wrong and also whenever you watch the solutions video for the practice test you can go through and i'll actually tell you what you did wrong if you said the answer was a when the answer was actually b or something like that okay so we get some really good data from it then when we come back on monday whatever you guys are missing on the on practice test i'll make an assignment that reviews those topics and then on tuesday we'll either take the test or I'll, I'll probably do the last day, our last really cool uh, area assignment, which is a historical area assignment uh, that I was going to do on Friday, but I'm, I'm moving it off. So I'll get some data for the practice test earlier so I can make some judgments on what we need to do when we come back. All right, so that's the plan. And then we will take the actual test on Wednesday. And so you guys will have plenty of time to review from Friday to Wednesday and I'll intervene i'll show you all the problems you guys are doing wrong and i'll make an entire assignment made up of all the problems that you guys need help with from the test okay so with that being said let's go ahead and get right into the assignment so on number one we want to find the area of the trapezoid so using the formula it's the average of the bases times the height so to find your height it's pretty simple and intuitively you can look at a trapezoid and you can find it but always again just like with the parallelograms look for the the drop perpendicular or the right angle in this case that's going to be the 12 right here and our two bases are 21 and 15. So when we're writing this out, we can do 21 plus 15 divided by two, and then you can just put it right in your calculator. So 21 plus 15, okay, and then I'm gonna divide that by two, which is gonna give me 18, and then I need to, uh, so that's the average of my base is 18, so then I have to multiply that times our height so times 12, so 18 times 12. Which is gonna give me 216. So my area is equal to 216. That should be one of your answers. So uh, as long as you see it's one of them, you can cross it out. If you don't get one of the answers, you can check on the solutions, of course. All right, find the area of the trapezoid. So we wanna solve for the value of X and then also for A. All right, so the and whenever you see these kind of uh, the answer, it's not really an answer bank, but it's where you can write your answers. That's how you need to solve the problem in that order. So solve for x first, then you can find the area. So if I look here, I've got 14 on the top. So that means that this part here has to be 14 as well. So 14 plus 16 is going to give me the entire length for x, which is going to be 30, I believe. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and move this 14 back up to the top. All right, then for the area, I have the base, which we said this was 30, right? And the other base is 14. So add those together is 44. Half of 44 is 22. So I want to take 22 uh, multiplied by my height, which is going to be 12. So 22 times 12, and just put that in the calculator, which is going to be 264. Alrighty.
pretty simple. All right, number 11, we're dealing with some um, a kite in this case. And we want to find the area of the kite. So again, we can do the we can multiply the diagonals. So I got six and six, which is 12, and three and nine, which is also 12. So it's 12 times 12. Uh, so if I'm writing it out, the formula is going to be 12 times 12 divided by 2. So half of 144, which is going to be equal to 72. Remember, the 144 is going to be the entire square, but we only want half of that because we're dealing with the kite, not the actual, uh, not the whole square itself. All right, number 18. This section is going to, definitely going to be the most difficult problems that you have because you have to do the Pythagorean theorem in order to be able to solve for the value of one of the sides. Uh, one of the legs. So you'll have a right triangle here and you have to solve for one of the sides. But again, always go in the order that you see here. So we have X, Y, and A. So solve for X first. I wonder if I did anything. No, I didn't. All right, so we should be able to solve for X directly. So if the whole thing on the bottom is 14, this part here is 8. 14 minus 8 will tell me what's left over. So 14 minus 8 is 6. So X is equal to 6. Now that I know this side is six, I have a right triangle. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, I'll guess I'll fill in six here. Now, if I have two sides of a right triangle, I can solve for the third side by using the Pythagorean theorem. So you can set this up. Uh, remember, 10 is gonna be our hypotenuse. So these are our legs. So I'm gonna say that we have y squared plus six squared is equal to 10 squared. So just a Pythagorean theorem. First thing I gotta do is get the y by itself. So I need to subtract the six squared. So subtract six squared from both sides. When we're left, we have y squared is equal to 10 squared minus 6 squared. Then the only thing we have left to do, because I don't want y squared, I want the square root of that. So I'm going to take the square root of both sides. So what I'm going to put in my calculator is going to be 10 squared minus 6 squared. And you can do those separately. So that's 100 minus 36, which is going to give me 64. And then when I'm done, I want to take the square root of that. So caret 0.5 which is gonna give me an, an answer y is equal to eight. This is actually one of our Pythagorean triples, so I kinda of got that one memorized. It's a three, four, five times two, so it's a six, eight, 10. And the last thing I wanna do is find the area. So that's gonna be the base, uh, the average of the bases times the height. And our height in this case we said was eight, right? Because that's what y was equal to. So eight and 14, when we add those two together, it's gonna to give us 22. Half of 22 is 11, and then 11 times eight is gonna give us 88. And you'll have three separate answers here that are on the answer bank. So you'll cross those out. You got six, eight, and you got 88. So cross all those out. Again, if you don't get an answer from the answer bank, you can check the solutions um, that I've posted. All right, the last one we're going to do is number 20, I believe. Yeah, almost done. Wow, we're going to get the whole thing done. And I spent some time telling you guys about the practice test tomorrow. So today will be an easy day. Uh, tomorrow should be pretty easy as well, just a practice test. Um, and it's Friday. We're almost to the weekend. It's kind of nice with the when we had a three-day weekend last week. All right, so on this one, we have a Cartesian plane, and this is coordinate geometry is another thing that they call it. Um, so in order to find the links, we actually have to either look at um, the extremes here, or we can just count. So in this case, I want to find the diagonals. Remember, our formula is diagonal times diagonal divided by 2. So if I'm going from 1 all the way over here to 12, how far am I going? So 12 minus 1, which is 11, OK? So we have 11 times, if I'm going from 0 all the way up to 6, that's going to be 6. So 11 times 6 divided by 2. Uh, you can actually reduce this if you want to do it in your head to that's going to be equal to 3. Uh, and this is 1 on the bottom. So I can now do it in my head pretty easily. So 11 times 3 is going to be equal to 33. And that should be one of your answers on the side. So you can cross it out. All right, so if you have any questions, consult the, uh, the solutions manual. You can figure out what you were doing wrong if you were setting something up or if you did a simple, uh, simple part wrong. Most of the trouble you guys are going to have is going to be with the Pythagorean theorem here. Uh, and so just set it up. Make sure you put the biggest one, which is your hypotenuse, which is the one opposite of the biggest angle, right? That's going to be the one that's by itself, okay? So those four problems, I did one of them, so you just got three more to do on your own. Uh, also, if you're struggling with this assignment, uh, you can always join us at 11 o'clock and I can go through more examples then or any other questions that you guys have. So uh, 20 minutes. All right. That's a short assignment or a short lecture. I'll see you guys tomorrow.